I'm Dr. Robert Cohen. Today I'm going to talk to you about a big uh, question type on the SAT and ACT, combinations and permutations. A lot of textbooks just give you a formula for combinations and permutations. I'm not crazy about that approach because A, the formula is tough to understand and tough to make sense of. B, it's kind of complicated, so it's really easy to forget. And C, on the tougher problems, sometimes the formula is not enough. You really need to understand what's actually going on to figure out the problem. The way I'm going to explain to you combinations and permutations, it's the formula. It's the same thing. But I'm not going to give you the formula. Um, I'm just going to explain it in you know layman's terms so you can really understand what's actually happening. Um, and that way, it's a lot easier to remember and a lot more powerful. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what the difference is between a combination and a permutation and how we can identify which one we're dealing with on the test when we get a problem. So let's see, uh, we're going to say combinations are on the left side here, and we'll deal with uh, permutations on the right side. Now, what's going to happen is in a combination, you're going to be mixing different groups of things. So let's say you're going to school and you need to pick a shirt, okay? And you have three shirts to choose from. And you need to pick a pair of pants, you get three of those to choose from. And you need to pick a watch. And you have three watches to choose from. Um, I guess you really like watches, but for school we're gonna we're gonna keep it to we're only one. So um, a combination, you know. So the problem is gonna say, you know, if I bring one shirt, uh, one pair of pants, and one watch to school, how many different combinations can I have of different combinations can I have of a shirt, pair of pants, and a watch? So we're mixing different groups, we're combining different groups of things. Okay. Now a permutation, on the other hand, um, we're picking from one group of things. So, you know, we could think of it like, I'll just write this so it's easy to remember, multiple groups, okay? And in permutation, we have one group. So let's say on the permutation, that you're, you're figuring out what type of pencil you want to bring to school. Okay? And you have five pencils at home, A, B, C, D, and E. But the school has this rule that you're only allowed to bring three pencils to school. Right? So the, the problem is going to ask how many combinations of, of three pencils can you bring to school from you know, given that you have these five pencils. So you have one group of items, and you're choosing items from one group. That's a permutation. Combination, you're combining different groups of objects. So, you know, one easier way to think about this is that if you see there are different types of objects, you probably have a combination problem. If there's only one type of object, you probably have a permutation problem. Um, but the again, the underlying logic is a combination are different groups that are being combined, as opposed to in a permutation, you're picking out objects out of one group. Okay, so now, uh, how do we do this? A combination, well, you draw what I like to call buckets, little lines, and you draw, you make the number of buckets equal the number of objects you want to end up with. So it, when I go to school, I want to make sure I have, you know, a shirt on. There's just one. Same thing with pants, one pair of pants, and one watch. So I have a bucket for shirts, because I want to end up with one shirt, one for pants, one for watches. And then I just fill in each bucket the number of items I have in that category. I have three shirts, three pants, three watches. I multiply them, and I end up with my answer, which is the total number of different 
combinations of shirts, pants, and watches I could bring to school. So, you know, for example, um, I won't write all of these out, but the first, you know, number one of 27 might be like shirt one, pant one, watch one. And then number two of 27 might be shirt one, pant one, watch two. Maybe this is a red watch, this is a brown watch. And you have 27 different combinations. Okay, that's how you do a combination. Now a permutation is, you know, a little different because again, we're picking objects from one group instead of multiple groups. So we start by doing the same thing. We ask ourselves, how many objects do we want to end up with? Well, we said that we want to bring three pencils to school. So we want to end up with three objects, so we draw three buckets. And next, we ask ourselves, how many different objects could go in the first bucket? Well, there could be five. This could be pencil A, B, C, D, or E. For the next bucket, the convention we use is we say, well, we've picked one pencil for this bucket, right? So now there should be only four pencils left to choose from. So if we picked A in this bucket, we can only pick from, say, B, C, D, and E in this bucket. So what about this bucket? How many, how many pencils can we choose from? Well, three, given this convention. So now the final step is to multiply these terms out. I don't know why I drew a five, that should be an equal sign. And you're going to end up with the total number of different ways that you can bring three pencils to school, 60. So that's how you do a permutation. Now there's one more thing that you're going to need to know how to do. Uh, it's the trickiest, it's not that difficult, uh, but relatively speaking, it's the, it's the more difficult thing. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, of these 60 pencils, one of them might be, for instance, one of the choices might be, uh, you know, actually let me, let me just write these out like this. So, uh, one of the choices might be A, B, C, right? One of them might be A, B, D, one might be, uh, A, C, E, you know, um, so these are all some of the 60 choices. <clears throat> but any one of these 60 choices could be arranged different ways, right? You could have A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C. So you see where I'm going here. Um, there's you know, going to be six ways, basically, that <clears throat> A, B, C can be arranged. So when you do the permutation formula, and when you do this process, you're ending up with, um, for each possible combination, right, it could appear six different ways. And all six of these possibilities, all six of these ways to write A, B, C, are included in these 60 in these 60 combinations. So this is one of the 60, this is number two of the 60, three of the 60, etc. Okay, so if, if the problem asks you something like, how many different ways could you um, seat, you know, people A, B, and C, you would want to count all these different possible ways to write A, B, C, because you would care about the order. order. It would matter if, you know, A was before C, or if B was before A, um, so that's what you have to ask yourself. Does the order in which these um, objects are listed matter? If it matters and you want to count, um, you know, these different uh, combinations, then you're done. Then your answer is 60, right? But would we want to do that for this problem, for example, where we're just wondering, how many different ways we can bring three pencils to school. We wouldn't, because for us, A, B, C, that's one of the ways we can bring three pencils to school. So for us, A, B, C is the same as, you know, B, C, A, because we don't care about the order in which the pencils appear. 
We just care about which pencils there are. So if your problem is like this, and it's this type of problem, where you do not care about the order, then you have one more step. And so what you do is you're going to take your, um, your answer from the permutation problem, the total number of combinations, and you're going to divide it by the number of ways that each answer choice right, can be arranged. And then you get your final answer. Because if you think about this, in other words, I'm saying I have 10 of these things. I have an ABC, an ABD, an ACE, <clears throat> and each of them can appear six different ways, right? So if you multiply 10 by 6, right, if you multiply each of these by its six different combinations, you end up with 60, the total number of combinations, right, including all these repeats where the order is counted. Okay, so how do we know what number to divide by, though? How do we know that there's six ways to arrange each um, answer choice? Well, it's actually another permutation. You say, let's say A, B, C. How many ways can I arrange it? Or, you know, A, C, E. Any of these, how many ways can I arrange any of these ten um, answer choices? Well, you want to end up with three objects, right? You're, you want to end up with three letters, so you draw three buckets. And then you say that there are going to be um, three, sorry, uh, there's, there's going to be three letters that could go in the first slot, two in the second, and one in the first. So for any of these answer choices, whether it's A, C, E, or A, B, D, when you take each one, you have three letters to go in the first slot, two in the second, one in the final slot. So there's six ways that you can order A, B, C, and we see them all here. So again, what we're doing in the end, we just take the total number of combinations, which includes all these repeats, and then we divide it by the number of ways that each uh, combination can be, can be arranged. And when you do that, you end up with an answer that basically cancels out and gets rid of all these repeats. So for this problem, where we want to know how many different ways can we uh, pick three pencils from this group, this is what you end up with. There are 10 ways you can pick three pencils from this group, and each of these 10 answers, like A, B, C, A, B, D, can be arranged six different ways. If you found this video helpful, you can subscribe to our channel for more videos like it.